Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is speaking out about China's defense minister and the uh, the minister declining to meet with uh, the uh, uh, defense secretary on the sidelines of the Shangri-La dialogue in Singapore this week. Here's what he said earlier today. Watch. I think that's unfortunate. I would welcome any uh, any opportunity to uh, to engage uh, uh, with uh, with leadership. I think defense uh, departments should be talking to each other uh, on a routine basis, or should have uh, open channels for communication. Austin also warning that he's concerned about having an incident that could, quote, very quickly spiral out of control due to recent Chinese aggression on international waters and airspace. Joining me right now is Fox News senior strategic analyst, chairman of the Institute for the Study of War, General Jack Keane. General, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Yeah, delighted to be here, Maria. And this is something we talk about all the time. Uh, I mean, are we getting close to something spiraling out of control? Look at all of the issues around the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, we've got suspected Chinese spies reportedly posing as tourists uh, to try to gain access to military bases in Alaska. General, your thoughts on where we stand here with the relations with China and why it feels like the U.S. is constantly begging for a meeting. Well, no, I, I don't think that's the case. I mean, keeping open communication with our adversaries is something we've done for generations. We certainly did it with the Soviet Union, and we, we've been doing it uh, with Russia and al also with China. And, and I think particularly for the Defense Department, uh, because mishaps can occur, misinterpretations can occur, and these are the people that, that have the guns, and, and we've got to make certain that something doesn't spiral out of, out of hand unnecessarily. Uh, there are communications taking place. Last week, you know, our trade representative met with uh, their, their uh, commerce minister in Detroit. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, our national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, had seven hours of meetings with uh, China's top foreign policy diplomat. But the Pentagon is on the front lines here. I mean, we shot down, you know, their spy balloon. Admittedly, we should have shot it down before it entered U U.S. airspace, but we did shoot it down. And that certainly railed the Chinese, and they've been pouting ever since, uh, ever since that incident. They have never spoken to the Indo-Pacific commander, who's been on duty now for two years and one month, and his counterpart hasn't spoken to him. And what, what's happening here? Well, we run our airplanes uh, in the Indo-Pacific region, gathering information on China every single day. We run our ships through the Taiwan Straits, through the South China Sea. China claims they own the South China Sea after they built the islands there. Nobody in the international community recognizes that. Uh, but nonetheless, they get all riled up by doing all of that. So the tension is there a little bit more, certainly, with the Defense Department than with the other departments of government. But I do think talking is good. Listen, we're well into what how China does when they talk. They talk nice and they play hard. That's the reality of what we're, we're facing here. N n despite the talking, nothing changes in terms of the strategic ambitions. Dominate and control the Indo-Pacific region at the expense of the United States and allies. Replace the United States as the world's global leader. That is where they are, and that is what they're moving toward. Well, it just seems like the U.S. is always the one wanting meetings, and the Chinese leadership continues to blow off the U.S. I mean, look, we've had police stations in, in America. No comment from the CCP about that. You know, we've had, uh, obviously, uh, other issues with the balloon. You say it was shot down, but it was, you know, fl floating above our military installations for almost a week, apparently sent Sending uh, information from our military installations back in real time to Beijing. No comment from the CCP on that, uh, other than making up a story that it wasn't what it was. Now you've got this report that suspected Chinese spies are reportedly posing as tourists. They're trying to gain access to military bases in Alaska. Several soldiers told USA Today in one incident a quote vehicle with Chinese citizens blew past a security checkpoint at Fort Wainwright in Fairbanks. The vehicle was eventually stopped. A search found a drone inside the vehicle. The occupants claimed that they were tourists who had gotten lost, General. So, you know, when are we going to stop asking for a meeting and start asking for answers to all of this? 
Well, I don't think. Let, let me be clear. I disagree with you here, Maria. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having meetings with our adversaries. Uh, if you think we're begging for them, I, I, I don't believe we are. But if, if that's the case, I, I wouldn't agree with that. But uh, listen, I am <clears throat> I'm cease being surprised by how comprehensive China's penetration of the United States civil society and our military establishment is. I mean, it is the most serious and most comprehensive penetration we have ever experienced in our history. Uh, Director Ray of the FBI says he opens a new case every 12 hours. And this thing on a military base, I mean, it's brazen. Just as much as the spy balloon was so brazen, which should have been shot down uh, over the Aleutian Islands, much less uh, permitted to transit the entire United States. But we got to recognize, and the American people are here with us, finally. They understand that this is a, a major security threat to Americans' interest and to the American people. We have consensus on this in the United States, and it, it is going to grow. I hope it translates into a defense budget that really makes some sense, with about 5 or 7 percent growth after accounting for inflation. We've got to catch up to China, and we're not doing that. We're actually falling behind with the budgets that are being proposed currently, much less attempting to catch up to China, who has more of everything that we value in a war, ships, airplanes, rockets, missiles. We need to have an effective deterrent, Maria, and we've been saying it for years. We don't need to match them ship for ship and airplane for airplane, but they've got to look at us and see that is a very effective capability the United States has, and that cost is too great for us to enter into a conflict yeah. with the United States. That is what we want them to have. Whoa. That's what the Soviet Union believed was there, and we don't have that now. And you've been saying this. You've been raising the red flag on this for years. You told me years ago that we are outmanned, and uh, Biden's military budget doesn't fully fund the military. L look at these numbers. We've got a smaller Navy. Uh, the, these numbers put us, uh, put us on track for a smaller Navy than China. China is marching to increase their Navy to 400 ships by 2025, 440 ships by 2045. The Biden budget takes the Navy from 298 ships to 291. The chief of naval operations testified to Congress that the Navy needs 373 ships and 150 unmanned platforms platforms to deal with the multiple threats that we're dealing with. And you just mentioned the FBI. Yeah, Christopher Wray tells us umpteen times over and over again that this is our number one adversary. But what are they doing about it? Well, in terms of a defense budget, they're not. And when you look at the defense is discretionary money. It's not like uh, Social Security. It's not like Medicare. We, this is money that they have. They, they have reasons to argue over and, and dispute what should that money be. That's called discretion. Double, on the domestic side of the House, where the discretionary money is, it's twice what it had been in the past. The Defense Department budget is just 3.2 percent over last year, which does not account for inflation, which means it's a declining budget. And we need about 5 to 7 percent above inflation to get the kind of equipment we need. You're absolutely right. The Navy is clearly not even close to where China is in its capacity. And this is the United States Navy that had been number one in the world, no longer is. The Air Force is the smallest it's been in 40 years. The Army is down to a size we haven't seen since prior to World War II. That's that's the reality of, of where we are in the defense establishment. When you take a look at the number, yeah. close to $800 billion, I mean, it's such a huge number, people have the difficulty getting their head around yeah. that number. But you've got to realistically look at what that number really means in terms of the cost that's associated with having an effective deterrence. Yep. And I suggest that, and been suggesting for some time, we really do not have that. Yes, you the good have. news is the China committee, the Congress itself, is very much aware of where we are, and many want to get us to the right place. Yeah. The yeah. American people are getting there themselves. And meanwhile, you've got the federal retirement plan, the thrift fund, allowing investment in sanctioned Chinese companies, many tied to the military. Unwitting investors funding the expansion of the CCP right now.
General, always a pleasure. Thank you so much, sir.